Welcome back. If you just joined us, we've been looking at the federal government's intervention in the rescue operation of the missing Chibo girls and Nigeria's defense policy in general. And our guest on this episode of Question Time is Nigeria's Minister of Defense, General Mansour Dan Ali. Don't go away. Now, this is a point where data collection, having a strong data bank, is necessary. How strong is your intelligence network in terms of profiling of all Nigerians and also the insurgents? No, no, no. For, for Nigerians, uh, that one is a bigger, wider perspective. Yeah. That is what the national ID card is because one of the. The CIA has all the data yeah. bank of an average citizen. Uh, uh, this is what I'm saying, but uh, the data bank of uh, Nigerians is not uh, domicile in the uh, Ministry of Defense. We have uh, other places like the interior, the Ministry of Information, where all these uh, international, I mean, ID cards national id card is being done that is why they have the that uh, data bank we only keep for the emphasis and the criminals that we are handling or like the uh, prisoners that we have under this program agency we have data bank on all of them and you can remember not quite long a list was brought out of about 100 and something of them that are in the wanted list of these Boko Haram uh, insurgents. The Bring Back Our Girls is mounting an intense pressure for the federal government to negotiate with the remaining 195 missing Chiba girls. Is the federal government considering ne negotiating with these uh, insurgents? It's a possibility. And the other possibility is also we are searching. We are going on. I, uh, if you can remember, not quite uh, long, we took some of them on an over uh, plight of the, over, of the general area that is being suspected. And truly... So for, for now, it's still been a fruitless search? No, it, it's not. It's not. Because if you say fruitless, that nothing comes out of it. But you have made a, another suggestion of the negotiation. It can also be uh, one of the uh, possibilities that we can come uh, across these uh, girls that is that uh, line of thinking to also go into negotiation for them but who are you negotiating with those that we negotiated with were able to because they are in camps there are a lot of them in different camps different uh, uh, factions so those that we identified that are ready and credible factions we negotiate with them and see the possibility of getting them back when you talk of negotiating with insurgents, that suggests that there is an established connection between the federal government and insurgents. So why are we not making the most of this? Um, it will be an added uh, advantage, like you said, if there is. But you see, what, what really happened, those ones that negotiated were through the factions. And some of the factions have already given up. Some of them have surrendered. And some of the factions are also willing to surrender. So it's a long something that uh, we are looking into at various options, how these things can be solved. In some quarters, they believe that the government is just being economical with the truth, because if there is an established connection with the Boko Haram insurgents, then why is it so difficult for the federal government to track, for the military now to track down the insurgents and secure the release of the Chibok girls? Yeah, uh, you said well established. No. Well established functions or uh, contact is not correct. But I said there, may be, there are other factions that do give up. They come to us, they give us information, and they negotiate. But Truly, only some of the factions that come with credible information and share information with us, and through that, we're able to get some of those uh, girls that we have recovered. With the Boko Haram insurgents breaking into factions now, uh, does that suggest that having a meaningful negotiation with the Boko Haram would, is going to be very difficult? Well, uh, it, it would be of... Uh, use that now that they are functional you can use some of them against each other we are going like such in a such if we are able to get some of them that are ready to negotiate with us through that we can it will serve as a stepping stone 
to get the other factions. How coordinated are other defense intelligence formations like the National Intelligence Agency and the DSS? How are they assisting with the military to fight this war against insurgency? We do have a synergy and that is why we have uh, the hope of why all these things are being coordinated. We have the Defense Intelligence Agency, the National Intelligence Agency and the uh, Directorate of the State Service. They are being coordinated at the office of the NSC. All these three services have a hope where they meet, the intelligence community meet almost every week or twice, a, I mean, week, uh, two weeks time whereby they share intelligence and get information, credible information from all the services. How would you assess the contributions of the multinational joint task force in charge? How has it aided the war against insurgency so far? Well, uh, uh, it has a very tremendous uh, effect. Uh, if you can remember, not quite long, we had a minist uh, ministerial meeting of all those countries. Uh, they came here for uh, final coordination of the second uh, operation that uh, Gamma IQ2. They, we had one before, uh, before the Sambisa conquest. Now we're having another one whereby the whole countries will now look at areas, likely areas where these insurgents will disperse to, especially at the Lake Chad region. And the Lake Chad has so uh, common border areas where you have the Niger side, the Chad side, and Nigerian side. So there is an ongoing operation now, Gamma IQ2, that will go into those uh, islands to be able to search and confirm some of the remnants that have uh, fallen out from Sambisa area. Let's move over to the challenge of restoring peace in the Niger Delta region. You disclosed recently that some of the members of the Federal Amnesty Program would soon be integrated into the nation's security architecture. Don't you envisage a boomerang from this? Well, you see, like I always say, the community, whenever you want to secure a place, you cannot live out of this community. Community plays an important role in whatever security uh, impetus you want to put in a place. So you cannot rule out the usage of those poor information gathering. Like I told you that the civilian JT have plays a very important role in the Northeast. So the possibility of also using some of them that are ready to get, share information with us is also there. Is the nation's security architecture not being unduly exposed because some of these ex-militants might still be sympathetic to their old course. Of course, that is why I say those that are usable, we will know. You cannot just come and tell me today, hey, something is happening there, I will go there, I didn't see anything, then I will continue to use you. Before we wind down on this conversation, the Amnesty International is raising a red flag over the rules of engagement of the Nigerian military, accusing the Nigerian military of severe human rights violation from rape, assault, attack on civilians, and all, all sorts of abuses. What's the response of the Defense Ministry to this? This is a very good and uh, intelligent question, because if you can remember our recent, in the Defense Headquarters, we established a desk of human rights. And of recent, there are a lot of officers, a lot of uh, soldiers that are brought under that desk who have been Imprison the human rights uh, abuses of uh, both civilian and other personnel. As I'm talking to you, we are thinking of establishing a court whereby all these cases of uh, imprisonment on human rights commission will be brought and discussed, and we ensure that all those that breach those uh, rights were bring to book and punished accordingly. The Honorable Minister of Defense, General Mansour Dan Ali, thank you so much for making our time to be part of this episode of Question Time. Thank you very much indeed. And that's it on this episode of Question Time. What's your take on the federal government's efforts in the rescue of the missing Chiba girls? Send us a comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Join us next week on another exciting episode of the show on Channels Television. Many thanks for watching. I'm Gwenga Ashuru. Bye for now.